thank you so much. Um, so this presentation today was proposed by uh, the chair of the Board of Supervisors for Sonoma County, uh, James Gore. And um, he's really sorry he couldn't be here today. He thought he could sneak out of his board meeting early this afternoon, but apparently their plate is pretty full. <clears throat> and you're gonna hear more about what Sonoma County is doing um, to build partnerships. And so I'm really excited to talk about this theme. And I think um, we're really excited to have Will Harling here to talk about a very successful partnership to build on what Sarah was talking about, is that you know we can have the science and we can have the understanding, but if we don't have functional relationships to bridge all the different parts of this equation, um, we're not gonna succeed. Um, so Supervisor Gore's hope for today is that this group, he really appreciates getting together, and he hopes that we'll be the point of the spear in moving us back into a functional relationship with fire as a resource instead of an enemy. Um, so we are gonna explore a little bit how we can start integrating fire into our management, and here's a uh, prescribed burn that we actually did at Pepperwood um, as part of our adaptive management of our preserve. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what Pepperwood does and then hand it over to Will so we can learn from our partners to the north. Um, so if you haven't heard of us, um, we're located in the Myokamas Mountains, halfway in between Calistoga and Santa Rosa, and you'll hear more about our experience during the fire in a second. Um, but we really joined the FIRE conversation. We're mostly known um, in the last decade having worked on climate adaptation plans for this area. So this is a map of the Russian River Basin plus our neighboring counties um, and looking at potential increased risk of fire as a result of climate. And we did this work with David Ackerley in our TBC3 group. Um, so people thought we were sort of thinking ahead here. And we've also worked with the Bureau of Land Management and other partner agencies to convene gatherings that bridge scientific community and the management community. <clears throat> and we did an in-depth event after the Valley Fire that brought in scientists from the National Park Service, like you see here, um, the chair of our Native Advisory Council, Clint McKay, our own preserve manager, Michael Galogli, and then Megan Sheline from Cal Fire to start having this conversation about what do we know and what do we not know um, about uh, real life management problems like we're talking about today. And we use our preserve as a venue for demonstrating how to do this work and teaching people how to do it. It's only one part of the triangle, but it's the part we have the most control over. And um, as people that have to do this work ourselves, we can share sort of the nuts and bolts of getting it done. Um, so this is what our Dwight Center for Conservation Science looks like now. Um, the Tubbs fire started here and came over the shoulder. Um, we were severely impacted and lost all of our wood structures, but for one, including two residents, our supply barn, <clears throat> and um, a, an observatory. Uh, but this is only a couple weeks after the fire. You can see the, the spring back. Um, and we were extremely lucky that our Dwight Center for Conservation Science, which is a big concrete steel glass structure built down into the hill, ended up being incredibly resilient. Um, did not catch embers, amazingly. Um, but the opportunity we have right now is because Pepperwood, our preserve shown here in, um, in the outline, is really heavily instrumented. So we were founded as the field station for the California Academy of Sciences. And since we opened our doors in 2010, we've been putting out weather and biological monitoring equipment. So we have five years of before fire um, conditions at the preserve. So we're one of the few places where we really can compare before and after conditions, and we're hard at work doing that with um, many partners in this room. Um, and one of the things I think that is exciting for us and is a new terrain to be in is that we have um, remote sensing data, including very high resolution LIDAR for the county, um, that enables us to look at the entire burn zone using satellites. And we're partnering here with Matt Clark and Lisa Bentley of Sonoma State to advance this work. Um, and so we feel like we're a laboratory where we can use the best science available to think about how to return disturbance to the landscape. This is our 2017 prescribed fire. And I will also say we have an active cattle grazing program on site. So in addition to forest treatments and thinning, and burning, we're using cattle in our grasslands as a disturbent agent. And it reminds me that um, during the fire, the way these guys survived was they actually hung out in the prescribed fire zone from the previous season. And they are smarter than I thought. 
Um, I also just want to let everyone in this room know, if you are in Sonoma County or in environs, there is a Sonoma County Forest Conservation Working Group. The working group is specifically designed to get the very best information possible to private landowners. So as has been mentioned, 80% of the forest in this county, for example, is privately held. And this organization is here to get to help put on events like this. There's brown bags that happen throughout the year and events and tours and ways that you can connect with professional foresters to help solve your problems. Um, so please join us uh, if you're so inclined. And I just wanted to highlight a few other public-private partnerships in the works. Um, first of all, you know, in Sonoma, I think we have the third day of the fire. Many of you in this room who are partner organizations, we all landed at the Open Space District looking at each other about what are we going to do next and how are we going to do this as a team. And that resulted in the Living in a Fire Adapted Landscape report that our district pulled together. And I think it was something like 200 people and 65 organizations provided their input. Um, and these are all different kinds of organizations from tribes to nonprofits to um, public agencies to individuals and, and private landowners. And that report was delivered to the Board of Supervisors over a month ago. And um, the supervisors have now launched an Office of Recovery and Resiliency to bridge between all the different programs and specifically to help foster these public-private partnerships. Because this, as we've been learning today, is not government is not gonna be the solution and individuals are not gonna be the solution. We have to work together. Um, we were working with a team called the Mayacamas de Berryessa Landscape Connectivity Network. It bridges Sonoma, Napa, Lake, Mendocino counties, gets into the new National Monument area. Um, so it's one of the few groups that was working across these county boundaries. And many people pointed out that this is going to be important, too, to take a regional perspective. And this group is identifying large landscape blocks to work on habitat management with multiple jurisdictions. And it's clear to us now we have to bring in this question of fire risk and vegetation management into that planning process. Um, and then another initiative underway working here at Sonoma State with our partners is, again, a multi-county approach to integrating all the incredible data sources we heard about today into a tool that people can use to plan projects on the ground and move those forward. And lastly, um, Gina Warka is here today from Audubon Canyon Ranch, and they've been invited to develop a proposal that would both help build our capacity to do this work on the ground and be training um, folks to move forward with that kind of skills. I just want to say another exciting initiative on the um, early warning side that we're all partnering with in the open space community is this idea of an alert North Bay that again would use, this is um, a pilot they're doing in Tahoe where they have 360 infrared video cameras that are being used to monitor the landscape and because we have these incredible vistas in, in 360 degrees at Pepperwood and then Sonoma State as well from the Fairfield Osborne Preserve will be hubs in this network. And again, working together to get the information to critical partners. Um, so I just, I kind of love this picture for this work that we're doing now. This is the, uh, a zone of the Valley Fire a year after the burn. This is what our chaparral is gonna look like a little later this season. Um, to think about the diversity and the resilience of this community 